Good evening. Are you relaxed? Uh, it's hard to this time of year, isn't it? But yet we're trying to, aren't we? Uh, thank you, Praise Band, for putting together our, uh, just to open things up and kind of get our minds on, on the Lord. And, uh, you know, as we just saw here on that little short video, uh, his journey went from the cradle to the cross. And uh, that's the real sign of his love, isn't it, for us? And so uh, I want you to take a deep breath with me. Exhale and uh, do it again. Clear your mind. You know, it really works. I went to the foot doctor on uh, Friday and he gave me three quarters of shots in your foot. And anytime you're ready for pain, a deep breath really hurts. It really helps, I mean. <laughs> uh, are we relaxed? Uh, put your feet up. I can do that. Uh, now I think I'm ready. But let's pray and ask the Lord to open our hearts. Fathers, we approach you. Uh, we do want to, uh, Lord, leave behind the hustle and bustle of the commercial side of Christmas. And Father, it is so fun to be around family and watch the joy of the children. And Father, we just want them to see, Father, what the Bible says. The joy of Christmas is the birth of Jesus. So let us slow down just a little bit and forget about the gifts and the wrappings and the food. And just for a minute, Lord, let the Holy Spirit take over our fleshly mind and our fleshly nature. And Father, let us hear what you have to say and what you've already said through song and through the word. Father, we may be prepared, Lord, in times such as this to be that light that shines in a time of darkness. Every generation has darkness. We certainly do. But the light of Jesus still shines through his people. That's us. So I pray this night that a little more light may radiate through us as we leave this place. Father, so that the birth of Jesus, the story, lays the foundation that led to the cross and our salvation. So, Father, would you bless the word tonight as it's about to be read again. And may our hearts absorb it. May our life be changed where it needs to change. Father, we may be useful to you in a time such as this. And this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Through 23. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She shall bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, a virgin, virgin shall be with child. She shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which translated means God with us. So I want to highlight the idea that he will save his people from his sins. If we miss that, we miss the whole story. And you know, as you think back to your childhood, and I like to do that often around Christmas time, what a wonderful time it is. It's mysterious and majestic. Although as Rick preached last week, there's a, a lot of pain and a lot of hardship that Mary and Joseph had to go through. But it was a wonder for heaven and a wonder for the angels to bring the good news to, to mankind. And, uh, and as you think about your childhood, I think about my own childhood, and, and my mom's here, I can thank her for this. Uh, Christmas was a, uh, not so much a Norman Rockwell time, but I think maybe like, um, what's the other guy's name, the, the artist, with all the lights? Thomas Kincaid, thank you. See, I should have put it in my notes, right? But at Thomas Kincaid, that uh, lots of light and lots of joy and lots of color and, uh, and that brightness and that joy, and of course, as a child, fun came around Christmas time. 
but it wasn't there and it wouldn't be there. We wouldn't have a, a holiday, so like everybody wants to call it. Now Donald Trump says we can go back to saying Merry Christmas, amen. And, uh, but we wouldn't have a holiday. We wouldn't have retail sales. We wouldn't have the lights and the beauty and the fun and all the childhood memories if Christ wasn't born, but yet he had to die for our sins. Now, in a little bit after I'm finished, the children are going to come up and share with us. We won't have a chance to applaud them, but I want to applaud them now as I heard them at practice. I'm so thankful for our children. Give them a hand because they have a faith that just says, I'll do it. Come up and I'll do it. And they did it for us. So we appreciate our kids. And uh, the Graff sisters are going to come up and play their guitars. Boy, they're really improving. It's just amazing to watch our kids grow up in the church, isn't it? And it really is about the children. See, in the very beginning, it was God's will that the Word of God was propagated through family. And that second generation that would pass through the wilderness and it was their turn to go into the promised land because they were faithful to God, God gave the law a second time there in Deuteronomy. And He adds something that's very, very important to help us understand the importance of family and especially our children as they grow up. And that is, he said to them in Deuteronomy chapter 6, that when you give the law, and when you talk about the moral law, and when the law of Moses is given the second time as it is as there in chapter 6, he says, look, when you lie down, when you rise up, I want you to share the word of God with your children. When you go to bed, those last words should be about God and his word and his blessings and how great God is. And how wonderful it is to have a Savior and to live on this side of grace and not to have to depend on the law. But it also says when you walk along the way, walk along the way of life, whether you're going to the mall or taking the children somewhere. I know we do a lot of running around nowadays, but turn the radio off, turn the electronics off, and talk about the blessings of God along the way. God is emphasizing this. He wants the second generation to be successful as they go into the promised land. You see, we're heading for the promised land, aren't we? That's really what this, that's why Jesus was born. So we'd make it to the promised land of heaven. But he says, along the way, I want you to, to talk about it with your children. But also, you want, he wants them to see it. He said, write it on the doorpost. Write it on your gates. So as you leave your house, you're reminded that God is with us. His word is with us. Back then, they didn't have the Holy Spirit in, in the whole family. But now everybody who's baptized into Christ has the Holy Spirit. It's a reminder as we walk in and out of the house and walk out into life where our children will be bombarded by this world that they're reminded of God's Word right there. Jesus said this, don't hinder the children from coming to me. See, the adults were busy and they're listening to Jesus. He had a healing ministry. They're excited about that. They were busy going from place to place. And someone stopped the children. He heard it. They stopped the children from coming to see Jesus. He says, don't hinder them, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You see, the only people who take the kingdom of heaven away from children is adults. And Jesus says, don't hinder them. As a matter of fact, he gave a warning to us. He said, look, don't make a child stumble. Don't irritate them. Don't exasperate them. Don't abuse them verbally. Don't abuse them, of course, sexually. Because we take away that innocence of God that He wants to pour into them through your life and through your mouth. So He gives us a warning. He even says, look, it's better that a millstone be, millstone be tied around your neck and thrown into, deep into the ocean. And what He's saying there, the judgment at the end is worse if we neglect our children. The day that Jesus would come with His triumphal entry, He goes into the temple. It's a great time for the people who are following Jesus. He just heals Lazarus. It's a big parade celebration. And the children are singing Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest peace on earth and good will to men. And uh, the Lord is near. And so the children unashamedly were willing to sing out Jesus' name and who he was, God Most High. Someone had to stop those children. He said, let them sing. Even the rocks would cry out. It's amazing the faith of children. Jesus said, have faith like a child. You see, your children believe everything you tell them, good or bad. They're going to believe it. They're going to react to it. And um, McKenna and Taylor have been in our house for a while. You know that over, over the years. She's eight years old now. And recently, uh, her, grandfather, her grandfather's brother passed away. And uh, she could tell that he was very nervous. He wanted to speak there and honor his brother. And, uh, and so she took him by the hand and walked up to the podium with him and comforted him. 
And then she also had words to speak. Children have faith. They believe that they can comfort the way Jesus comforts them. They believe it when they see it from you, when you comfort them. Now they learn to comfort others. And so the birth of Jesus, this time of year, it is a, it is a time to, uh, for excitement for kids, but it's a time to get their attention. It's an opportunity to share the true reason why Jesus came. And that is to die for them, to save them. Children understand what it means to be saved by somebody. They have lots of fears. And many times you've saved them from a night of a bad dream. Or, they, or they're just excited and they don't know how to calm themselves down. You've saved your children in many ways. From danger and fear and, uh, and especially um, discomfort. And, uh, and so uh, back in 1965, uh, you know, if you, if you think back... Uh, there's things you never forget. They're just so ingrained in your mind. As a matter of fact, you know, as we talk about dementia here recently and Alzheimer's and as we share from our loved ones and our relatives the, you know, what they go through. And, and one thing that's amazing is how they keep their long-term memory, their childhood. As a matter of fact, often they talk about their parents and you know, my parents are getting ready to pick me up. Uh, do you have the keys to the car, they would say. And it's just amazing how that long-term memory is there. So, you know, no different with our childhood. And, uh, and I'll always remember this back in 1965, it was a, it was a white Christmas. And uh, I remember my father taking the family over to my grandmother's next door. It was about a foot of snow and still snowing. And uh, we had a white picket fence and the snow was coming up to the second board. Wow, that's exciting, you know. And, um, and so my father comes back you know, to pick me up. And I had been in the house for a whole year because I had rheumatic fever, so I couldn't come out. Was, uh, I know I drove my mother crazy. I was bouncing off the walls, jumping on her bed and everything. And uh, she had to hear a lot of crying because I was in pain and everything. And so I went for Dad to come, come off uh, over to the house. And uh, it, it was just really great, just the anticipation of going outside. I had been outside for a very long time, and it's a white Christmas. And uh, as I looked out the window and watched the snow, we had the, an old incandescent light bulb, real, real big bulb, was our street light on the corner. We lived on the corner, and, uh, and it had a hi-hat on it, and uh, the light would shine down like this, and big flakes were just coming through that, you know? And uh, it was just taking me away. And uh, so my father picks me up, and he throws me on his back, we're walking down the sidewalk. He always took, uh, remember High Five stereo? Uh, they weren't stereos yet. They were called High Five. Before they were stereos, High Five. And I always remember because we had a High Five console, uh, console, and it had a little red light. That means, you know, it was on. But my father would run a wire to that outside to a speaker, and he would play, play the old Firestone Christmas album. And only a few of you will probably remember that in this room, but it was all Christmas songs. And uh, so the Christmas songs were playing out through the snow. It was quiet as snow is. It painted everything. And my father threw me on his back. We went down the sidewalk. We got to the road. He turns around. We look at the house. And, uh, and this is the Thomas Kincaid moment. Uh, our house was pink with white trim, and he had used all red Christmas lights over the whole house. And uh, as I look back, it was just like something I always remember, which is beautiful. And uh, back then you had single pane glass windows, and they usually frosted up, and Jack Frost visited your house. And it was just kind of just a beautiful scene. So he took my grandmother's house next door. And uh, first thing I noticed is just the smell of grandma's cooking, you know, coming through the house. All the kids excited and everybody talking and everything. And um, her dog, Wags, came running up to me and uh, stayed with me the whole night. I guess he missed me, and I missed him too. But that's how animals are. They just sense something, don't they? And uh, Wags followed me all around at Christmas. And, um, and so when I came in, I sat down. Of course, there's Grandma's beautiful tree there. And this is back when the, you had a C7 bulb in a uh, tin star reflector. Anybody remember that? You have to raise your hand. Remember those? That was, it was a beautiful thing. It was on the tree, and uh, the presents were all around the tree. It was cousins there, too, and uh, stacked up to the TV. By, by the way, the TV was in a wooden console, just like the hi-fi, you know, and it wasn't on, though. The TV wasn't on. But here's what I remember. Everybody was filling their plate and getting their Christmas dinner, and uh, Grandma always made three meats. It was, you know, turkey, roast beef, and ham, you know, chicken, roast beef, and, and something else. She always insisted on that, and then all the pies and cookies, and we still use, cook Grandma's fudge and Grandma's sugar cookies, and she always made some pumpkin pies and apple pies and a cherry pie and all that. But I remember everybody was get, getting their food, and 
I sat right on the couch next to my grandmother. She was in her rocking chair. And uh, I was probably about six, a little over six years old. And uh, it was just that moment. I think my heart was open. I think it was open because uh, I really thought I was going to die from, from the rheumatic fever. You had a lot of pain when you were a kid. And uh, somebody got me that prayer that said, Now I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, pray the Lord my soul to take. Now they canceled out if I should die nowadays. They don't put that on there anymore. But you think about that when you're a kid and you don't know what's going to happen. So I did receive a lot of comfort for that, from that. But it opened my mind at that age about God. And that's really the point I want to make tonight. That that's the time when children are small and they're beginning to listen. First grade, second grade. I don't care how hyper. I was hyper. doesn't matter. There's that moment when they're listening. And that's the moment you tell them the reason why. And so it happened to me with my grandma. She's sitting there in her rocker. And it seemed like everything slowed down. Everybody else was in the kitchen. And she explained to me the manger on the mantle of her fireplace. And she told me the real reason why we're celebrating Christmas, that Jesus was born and he came and the angels told the truth about who he was, that he was the son of God who would take away the sins of the whole world. And I didn't quite understand that so much, but I understood there was something larger, something bigger that brought all this joy to people around Christmas time. And so that was a seed planted, wasn't it? And, soon, and, and, and then one day it gave growth. Because for a long time, I did what most people do in America, I uh, did my own thing. I had my freedom, you know, did my own thing. And uh, when life failed, when I failed, when I failed to recognize God and everything fell apart, I remembered Grandma's story. And I remembered John 3.16 from Sunday school. And so it is as much about celebration as it is the children and what they hear from us. Jesus said, don't hinder them. It's the time to tell them. It's the time to share with them why their hearts are open, why there's joy, why there's fun, why there's excitement. Tell them why they need to know. And one day they'll be drawn back to it. Well, you know, it was the night before Christmas, but I'm not going to say that one. I found another one. And so open your heart to hear it. It is the story. It was the night before Christmas and all through the earth. Every creature was stirring, awaiting a birth. The time for Messiah was certainly near. The prophets foretold it. The Bible was clear. From the book of the beginnings, the very first sin, God's word made it clear how his grace entered in. Born of a virgin, he'd come as a man. The creator among us, the time was at hand. The stars were arranged to show marvelous things, setting wise men to journey and find the true king. Shepherds in Bethlehem gazing on the sky, longing to see him the Lord most high. How could they know that that very next night an angel of God would speak words of delight? How the Savior was born, it was news of great joy. In a cloth, a manger, they'd find the dear boy. And the heavenly host would soon join to sing of the glory of God, of wonderful things. He entered creation, set position aside. He showed us how deeply his love did abide. Sin sent us away from our almighty Lord. He became one of us that we might be restored. He's the prince of our peace. He's the one who made whole. He is wisdom incarnate, a shepherd of souls. He's the author of life. He rules all. He can offer us salvation in his name we call. The shepherds and the wise men would bow to adore. Holy God among men, our great reward. All glory and honor is due to this King. Let us join in worship. Let every tongue sing. Jesus is Lord. All creation proclaims. He is the first and the last. He is always the same. History turned on that first Christmas day when God became man in a humble display. 
As we think of the manger in which he lie, let our hearts welcome him to the world he made. Pray with me. Fathers, we're in your presence as we've slowed down our pace. We're thankful that, Father, in your grace, before the foundation of the world, your loving kindness and everlasting love prepared us, Lord, for the birth of Jesus. And Father, thank you that we live on this side of grace, that we're not under the law, but we're saved through the Lord Jesus Christ and faith in Him. And so, Father, as we close out this service, as we sing, Lord, again, as we light candles, Lord, to remind us that He is the light of the world, but He's passed that light to us, His believers, His church, that in a time such as this, we would shine, Lord, and we would shine as we leave this place. So, Father, the joy of the birth is every day, every day an opportunity to proclaim. Like the shepherds, Lord, as they went away, they made known that a Savior was born. And so, Father, from the cradle, Jesus went to the cross. Let us not forget the main reason why He came. He is the Savior who saves people from their sins. So thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. You've given us the greatest gift we could ever get under a tree, and that's the salvation of our soul, the forgiveness of sins, the work of the Holy Spirit that brings us closer to you every day. So would you bless the rest of our time, and thank you for being our God and our Father, for sending Jesus. In his name I pray.